DC Animation has been key in the recognition of the modern day DC Universe with their animated shows and movies, particularly with the DC AMU slash the DC Animated Movie Universe based on the New 52, which ran from 2013 to 2020, starting with Justice League Flashpoint Paradox and ending with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. And in all honesty, I sometimes like to refer to this continuity as the Batman Animated Movie Universe because my guy is everywhere. The universe has had a major problem across the board with not giving enough attention or spotlight to major DC heroes like Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, some of the more magical components of the DC Universe even. Superman only had two movies in this whole continuity with it being a two-parter surrounding the death of Superman and the reign of the Superman. Having Superman's only major plot point in this whole universe be his death and resurrection is crazy work. You only ever see him outside of that play a significant role in the Justice League films. Wonder Woman legit only got one movie and it was the second to last film before the universe ended with Apocalypse War. Green Lantern never got a movie. The Flash never got a solo movie, not including Flashpoint. Loki tragic out here for some of these characters. I can't eat! I'm broke, nigga! I'm broke! Meanwhile, Batman fans were feasting with not only Batman having four movies in this universe, plus him being in every Justice League film, including Justice League Dark. Like seriously, why the hell is Batman a major player in a Justice League Dark movie that's supposed to give center stage to the more magical oriented characters like John Constantine and Zatanna? Bros in the poster and everything. Shrouds. They deliver souls to hell. They're drawn to you. Or maybe it's your cologne, Batsy. This one has cheated us many times. It is vexing. Boo. And to add some dessert to the all-you-can-eat animated Bat Buffet, Batman was also getting a bunch of Elseworlds slash standalone animated movies releasing alongside the DC AMU like The Killing Joke, Gotham by Gaslight, Batman Ninja, Batman Soul of the Dragon, and the list just goes on and on. Many of the major character arcs and growth center on the Bat family, specifically with Damian Wayne's character as Robin, as you see him transition out of his pre-established character traits as a brat raised by the League of Assassins. There are a total of 16 movies in the DC AMU, and Batman has somewhat of a role in 12 of them. Oh, Get off that nigga dick, bro. What is you doing? What? No, nah, you right. I was dick riding. That's what I'm saying, bro. You gotta calm down with that shit. Yeah, my fault, my fault. Bro, with all that said, this adaptation of Batman is kinda saucy, and he has some of the best action sequences across different mediums. The storytelling does lack in certain areas, but it ain't bad by any means. I mean, you got the whole nine yards. I'm talking Bat Family, being a team player with the Justice League, beating up his own children. Tiger. This version of Batman and the Bat Family is not to be trifled with. The first solo Batman film is Son of Batman with the introduction of Damian Wayne and Deathstroke as the main villain. Couple things to note right off the bat, Deathstroke is nerfed as hell and Damien is overpowered. Batman just straight up one shots Deathstroke when they come face to face, over in seconds, worse than the whooping he got in Arkham Origins. What? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. What makes it even worse is how Damien is able to go toe to toe with Slade. Like, this has got to be one of the sorriest versions of Deathstroke I've ever seen. Brother, <laughs> this thing is trash. But it's all good. They did a much better job with him in Teen Titans: The Judas Contract, where he came back stronger after dipping in the Lazarus Pit. You know, dipping the little toes in there, effectively getting his leg back against Damien. Let me guess, they got you to a Lazarus Pit just in time. I've been bathing in it quite a bit lately. You might say it's addictive. Improves muscle tone too. <laughs> Losing your edge. Your friends have made you soft. You see something? You know you don't fucked up, right? Like I said, soft. Batman vs. Robin is the second film that further establishes the dynamic between Bruce and Damien. Court of Owls are the center antagonists this time around, and boy, the fight scenes that are in this movie gotta be some of the coldest in the entire series. Damien is a straight up fiend in this movie, being one of them badass kids disobeying orders, being all aggressive and whatnot, thinking all that. A really interesting component of this film is how it incorporates Damien's more brash nature with the character of Talon, who tries to manipulate Damien throughout the events of the movie. To make matters even worse, Bruce was dating some chick named Samantha, who turned out to be the freaking 
grand master of the court. Like, bro, man, bro, this man Bruce sure does have a type. Talia Ghul, Selena Kyle, leader of the Court of Owls, goddamn. After catching Damien interacting with Talon in 4K, Talon skedaddles from the premises as Bruce tries to reason with Damien, explaining how much Talon is just using him in order to get to Batman himself. But Damien not trying to hear none of that and pulls out a battery and talking muscle. Now get out of my way before. Before what? Bro. Damien, you're not him. Who do you think you are? I know he felt so cool after saying that, thinking he had some cold line delivery. Batman done moved his hand away like, and this kid just does not quit. He went ahead and had the audacity to cut Batman's rope as he's grappling away. I just know Bruce was tired of this BS. Like, I know this little nigga did not just try that on me. This encounter could pretty much be summed up as a preteen Robin going all out while Batman is desperately trying to beat the abusive father allegations. Bro goes ahead with a jump kick with Batman just bobbing and weaving. It's just so funny seeing Damien try this much while Batman's just not really giving it much thought or care. Throwing smoke pellets and everything like, dog, it's not that deep. Bro was just taking the butt whooping a little bit, but he couldn't let Damien get too wild now. Had to show him he's still the main man around these parts. Gonna be breathing out of me personally i wouldn't take this level of disrespect this is what happens when you have an unwanted biological child who was trained by ninjas bros just getting a little too saucy with it to the point where batman had to handcuff him and tie him up to a rope and even after all that damage still trying to run their ones but bruce would go out of his way to protect robin from fall damage even though he probably deserved it unshockingly going alongside talon was a big mistake as once damien reveals his identity to the court and talon samantha immediately recognizes him and it's like oh wait that's bruce wayne's kid as robin therefore he must be batman batman was right you were just using me. Yeah, no shit, dumbass. An entire army of the Court of Owls raid Wayne Manor in the Batcave, so it was time for Batman, Nightwing, and Alfred to lock in. Had Alfred with the shoddy taking out Talons left and right. Batman activating a suit of armor to fight out some Talons. Now I'm only gonna say this once, you sons of bitches. Get the hell out of my cave. Batman and Nightwing have the ultimate team up against the armada of Talons and Wayne Manor. I swear, their performance was on par with Shaq and Kobe, and further proves you can't beat the classic duo Dick Grayson and Batman. There's gotta be hundreds of these fools surrounding them, but that ain't gonna stop the dynamic duo from showing off and deliver some nasty combos. Batman over here with the mink, 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 and just look at that coordination here. <clears throat> Nightwing with the clean maneuvers, they be doing my boy right. <laughs> Then, boom. Akin to DC AMU tradition, Nightwing has to get injured in some way, shape, or form in every single one of these movies for some reason. Drop it at his feet. I'm like, boom, you looking for this? This short fight alone between Batman and Talon further solidified how my boy Bruce got that dog in him, bro, was not out here playing games. You and the court try to take control of my city, and destroy my home. Worst of all, you messed with my kid. So this is gonna hurt, and I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> You're so cool, bro. I just like. Bro. Them brothers of the animation studio cook with this one because the choreography in this sequence is magnificent. <laughs> Batman done putting in that work, making Town look like a sorry ass fighter, talking to all that smack and over here getting whooped. But then, you know, it's all looking good and dandy, then boom, bro, Batman was just caught lacking. <laughs> Damien unfortunately comes into the nick of time and they have him, you know, Damien and Talon tussle for a little bit and uh, ends like, uh, well, I guess you can see it for yourself. Instincts. Oh, okay, goddamn. Batman Bad Blood is what really expanded the Bat family with the introduction of Catherine Kane Batwoman and Luke Fox's Batwing. But it's odd how we pretty much never see those characters again aside from getting murked in Apocalypse War. Barbara Gordon gets teased at the very end, but she only appears once with actual speaking lines in this universe within Batman Hush. This film is a bit odd with its characterization of Talia, as she's essentially the main villain, but her villainous nature is a bit of a 180. One minute in Son of Batman, she's a caring mother and allows Damien to stay with Bruce, but here she's out here creating clones with Damien with the heretic and mind controls Bruce to take over the world with him I guess then you'll break him and then he'll be ours who are you I'm the product of a program that your our grandfather initiated they used your DNA and put it through a process of accelerated growth. The film starts with Batwoman's introduction, fighting off Batman's villains like Firefly, Killer Moth, Electrocutioner, and some others. Batman comes in to help, but also arrives the heretic who wanted to demonstrate to the audience that Batwoman just ain't built like that. And you rag on me for stealing your look. 
Batman saving Batwoman's life leads to his supposed death, which sparks Dick Grayson to take up the mantle of Batman for a little bit, teaming up with Damien as Robin. Later on, they end up finding Bruce captured and rescuing him, but Talia had already brainwashed him, so when the Bat family tries to stop her evil plan, Batman is ready to run the ones. We don't have time for this, Damien. Join us or die. Father. <laughs> I took a deep breath, I looked at my friends, I was like, it's about to go back. Now let's see, we have a bloodlusted Batman versus a version of Nightwing and where the writers like to finesse him and have him get disrespected one way or another in all of these films. Gee, I wonder who's gonna win. Now at first glance, you're like, yep, it's Raps or Dick, GG, but them having a little tussle at first, somewhat evenly matched, but then Nightwing pulls out his scrimmage sticks and as he knew it was time to lock in. High key put in that work. This is the first time I'd see him put this much effort in a fight in this universe, but I mean, who could blame him? He's going up against freaking Batman. They say hard work pays off, because, you know, it seems like things might be going his way with his first major hit on him. <laughs> but yeah, that was the only hit Dick got on Batman after that, because it was just downhill for my man's going forward. This wasn't even a fight anymore, this was a massacre. Batman giving him combos, I don't even see him enforced on the Joker sometimes. Straight up African parent levels of butt whooping. And it's funny how this isn't even the only time Bruce gets brainwashed, with the second time being Apocalypse War in which Darkseid wreaks havoc across the universe with Superman's plan and attacking Apocalypse and Darkseid failing so badly, half of the universe's heroes were killed or converted into working for Darkseid, with Batman being brainwashed by Darkseid and using the Mobius chair. Evidently, Batman got his leg back against his own son, and this ain't even a fight, it was just a straight up annihilation. Your mother drugged me to conceive you, goaded me into raising you and broke me mentally once my eyes were opened by Lord Darkseid. I see you were never my son. Don't listen to him, Damien. That's Darkseid talking. In the past, I let you win. This time, I won't hold back. <laughs> So yeah, we all know Batman's one of the sauciest characters in fiction, mainly due to the amount of exposure and how many adaptations there have been. But I'm gonna need that same treatment for other DC characters. We got regular folk out here thinking Superman's a boring one-dimensional character who's too overpowered. In terms of a rating, I'd say this DC AMU Batman has near max levels of sauce when it comes to his visual aesthetic and combat ability. I mean, hey, if they can get somewhat this close to a, an adaptation of Batman in live action with the Brave of the Bold in the DCU, we might be in good hands.